Okay, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to our webinar. Um, my name is Sean van den Berg. Um, welcome to the, this week's webinar. The title of the webinar is How to Leverage Off Your Own Share Portfolio. But before we get going, I just want to say from my side, thank you very much for taking the time out out of your busy schedule to be with us today. We really appreciate your support and interest. So as I said, today's webinar is entitled uh, How to Leverage Off Your Own Share Portfolio. Um, and you can see the subtitle there is Make a Fortune the Warren Buffett Way. So as an extension to that is by using other people's money or what they call OPM. So how many of you, this is where I can get you guys to become a bit more interactive, show of hands. Um, how many of you uh, have ever thought about using other people's money? In other words, uh, OPM. So you could buy a business, for example, or uh, start an investment pro a property. Okay, Vili, on the on the on the go, go there. Okay, some of you guys have. Okay, Tabo, awesome. Okay, so you guys have thought about using other people's money. Thank you very much. Thanks for participating on that question. Um, so in, in a, what I mean by that, in other words, you want to buy a business or property using none or very little of your own money. That's what I mean by by that statement. So, um, you know, down the line, you realize that you know, it's going to either be customers or tenants or, so, you know, we can call them also renters that will pay it, it for you. So the second question I want to ask you guys, how many of you, uh, maybe I don't have to keep your hands in, I won't call out your names. How many of you need money fast? <laughs> okay. So you don't have to reply back to that one. But So in this webinar, we're going to discuss how to, how you can leverage your existing share portfolio to take advantage of opportunities in the market. Okay, so that's my, my objective today. So let's kick off by looking at a quote, like I do every, every webinar. I like to use a quote, and this, is, this one's from Peter Drucker. Um, and he says, let's get to the next page here quickly. There we go. Okay, Peter Drucker, quote from him, says, business, that's easily defined. It's other people's money. So why am I talking that? And... Um, <laughs> Just bring it into a bit of a um, into context. Here. There's, a, there's an old saying: you can work hard for your money, or your money can work hard for you. So, um, how many of you read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad Poor Dad? And how many of you have? Okay, uh, that book changed my my views on on finance many many years ago. But in that book, and uh, this is where I'm going to stand on some toes. Uh, Robert uh, Robert says that to many people, success means going to school, working hard, getting a job. And maybe one day having enough money to retire. Now, for many people, and this is what I was to on some people's toes now, for many people, the biggest asset is the property in which they're living. Now, Robert's definition of an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. So just bear with me. <laughs> I know some of you guys are bristling already. You know, I myself am a property investor. Many property investors will go out and buy the first uh, uh, property. They might have the financing available so, you know, so they can... Uh, uh, you know, through savings stored up and they can put money down on, as a deposit. But the problem comes in buying the, the second property and building up the, the portfolio. Remember, we've got this whole thing called NCA and credit worthiness and the banks are a bit more reluctant or more reluctant to, to borrow that money. So um, you, know, you have to become more creative, um, you know, because you might not have enough money left. So in that sense is when it comes to building wealth, the name of the game is returns. Many people measure the returns based simply on the level of their assets. Now, but the key metric that investors should care about is, and this is what's important, is return on invested capital. The difference between a return on invested capital and return on assets is what is we call, what we call OPM, other people's money. By maximizing your returns on other people's money, that helps you or lets you keep more of your own money in your pocket while building a uh, wealth fast. So this gives give you a bit of an introduction, a bit of context where we're going to talk about now. So um, what is the current situation? Now, the, the current situation for a lot of people, and uh, again, I'm, I'm generalizing here, so just bear with me. Yeah, you know, most or a lot of consumers are under pressure. You know, we, uh, we feel overwhelmed, they lack direction, they, uh, well, they've got all these payments, loans and overdrafts and credit cards and revolving credit and things like that on the one side. The other side is they have cash flow problems. You know, they, their salary is stretched out, the overdrafts to the limits, the credit, credit cards are maxed out. Um, 
and all those kind of things. So what I think by what I mean by that is they lack flexibility and what are the options? So that is where we, we where we want to go to. That's the current situation. So if we had to take a, a step back, we had to look at um, the difference between debt and equity. The best way to build equity is using someone else's money. Now the purpose, for, now, and this is why I bring in Warren Buffett again. We spoke just now about Warren Buffett using other people's money. He owns quite a few insurance companies. Now let's talk about insurance company. Now the purpose of insurance company from a customer's perspective is to offer protection from financial loss. Now for this uh, uh, coverage, for example, you might be paying insurance uh, cover for your car. Now you as a driver will be paying premiums. But if it ended there, insurance companies like our insurance would not be making a profit, okay? Because <laughs> policyholder claims generally exceed premiums uh, uh, paid, invested. So ideally, to understand how insurance company works, you need to look at it from a, call it that board of directors point of view, perspective. It is then you see that the purpose of insurance company is to, isn't to provide co uh, cover or coverage, it's to borrow money and to invest it. Now, for example, I'm just hypothetical. After all, if you have 10 million policyholders paying you 500 rand each a month for car insurance, that's 5 billion piling up every 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 30 days. Now, that's money is what what what's referred to as the float. Now, most of all, you know, most if not all of that money will eventually be paid out. But the key word here is eventually. So in the meantime, the insurance company is free to continue collecting the premiums and investing the float for their own benefit. Okay, so that's the one side of the coin. Another side of the coin, if you look at a definition of leverage, leverage is the use of credit to enhance one's speculative capacity. So I'll come back to that just now, just to bear that in mind. So what is the ideal situation? Many of you on this webinar today do you have existing share port portfolios with PSG Wealth. So hopefully your port over the last few weeks we've been talking about building diversified share portfolios using value, using growth, whatever the case might be. But ultimately your goal as an investor is to build a portfolio that there is capital growth, number one, and hopefully there's, in the last week we alluded to it, where you have some uh, um, dividends in that portfolio, so you're growing with dividends and there's growth in those dividends. Okay, so that's, that's our deal situation. But you want to go one step further, where you want to leverage off that share portfolio so you can have extra cash flow. You see some examples of what I mean by that just now. So that's our ideal situation. Imagine if you had extra cash flow, what would you be doing with it? Okay. So, how do we get there? Now, before, and again, I'm going to come back to it. We're talking about your share portfolio, and we're talking about uh, using other people's money, and we also talk about debt. And a lot of people say, oh, debt's a four-letter word. But they, just understand there's good debt and there's bad debt. Debt for many people today is simply a, a fact of life. You know, uh, it's a way they pay for everything from big items like cars to, to houses to daily um, expenditure, you know, putting in petrol and buying chewing gum, for example. But this most basic uh, definition is it's just the amount of money borrowed from one party to another. Okay, now that debt, definition of, of debt, as I use, there, is neither, it's, it's neither good or bad. So you need to dig a bit deeper. Now, let's talk about good debt. Now, there's, no, there's that old adage, it takes money to make money. Now, that's one way to look at good debt. So, good debt helps you generate income on the one side, but also it helps you increase your net worth. So, you'll see where this is getting to just now. But saying that, and this is where my little um, uh, caveat comes in, there's no guarantees. You know, while good debt, debt might uh, seem like a good idea, it's important to realize that even the best idea doesn't, or the best ideas don't always uh, work out as, as intended. So <laughs> we'll come back to this now, but just remember there's no guarantees. Now let's talk about bad debt. Now what is bad debt? And this is where a lot of us fall down. Now bad debt is basically all debt incurred that's put, uh, where you go purchase depreciating Assets. Remember, I spoke just now about Robert, Robert Kiyosaki's definition of, of an asset, something that puts money in your pocket. Okay, and then we also get liabilities, something that takes money out of your pocket. A lot of us have depreciating liabilities, we would rethink our, our assets. So, in other words, this is how you must protect yourself. If it won't go up in value or generate income, you should not go into debt to buy it. 
Okay, so we all know that, but we're still going to do it. So, what are we proposing today? I'm proposing that you use your, those of you that have a, a, a share portfolio with PSG, uh, leverage off it and open what we all apply for, what we call a Scriffin loan facility. So there's some certain criteria around it, and you'll see a quote just now when I talk about rules. First of all, you have to be a South African citizen. Secondly, the portfolio value must be at least 100,000. That's in holdings. When I say holdings, it's cash add in, in shares. Okay, so to qualify or to, to, to when you apply for this, the initial loan value must be greater than 25,000. 25, and that can be split between, when I say that 100,000, let's say between your holdings and cash. So the, the, the 100,000 value of the portfolio, number one. Number two, you can borrow money against your portfolio, provided it's in the top 100 shares. Okay, so top 40 is the first, uh, top 40 companies, the large cap stocks. You're eligible to, to borrow 30% against your value of your, of your, of your shares. If it falls into what we call mid caps, that's a, in, uh, we're talking about size between 41 and, and 100 on that, on that uh, top 100 scale, um, you're eligible for 25% credit. Just note that no share, you can't borrow any, for, uh, you can't borrow any, uh, money against shares outside that top 100. Okay. So what happens now, your share portfolio gets converted or it gets pledged and seeded and they use the, share, the shares in your portfolio now as a loan. Okay, so that, that is the, the, the process behind it. On acceptance of the mandate, so you'll see just now, you'll see a slide where I say how you go about applying for, for the, uh, uh, the loan facility. On acceptance of the product uh, terms and conditions and obviously credit approval, the account status has changed from a share portfolio to a loan, a loan account. You have access to that, that cash in your portfolio within 48 hours. Okay, you can take that money and withdraw it and put it into your bank account, or ideally, this is what we suggest you guys do: is open up other accounts or invest through other uh, trading accounts with PSG and Wealth. There's no real cost involved. Only thing is that there's interest charged at the prime lending rate right now, which is 10 and a half percent. Okay, so that's that's the main criteria: what shares qualify and what's going to cost you. So he has a hypothetical share portfolio, and I want to harp on this idea of a well-diversified portfolio. So you see there's 15, 15 stocks in them. They're mostly, obviously, all of them are top 100 stocks. Here, the portfolio is over 3 million rand. See, when I say well-diversified, not one share is more than 10%. Sassel, for example, is highest. It's got 9.9. Uh, .9. I always love Sassel, so maybe that's why uh, it's got the highest uh, value in there. Okay. Now, as I say, they're all top 100. You can see, for example, Aspen is a top 40 stock. The loan facility there, you qualify uh, the value of the portfolio of, of, of Aspen in the portfolio is 199,000. Three percent of that, the loan value is 59,000. Okay, you can see there bulletins, three percent, uh, British American Tobacco, uh, Capco. They're all large cap stocks. Then we get down to JC, the, the actual uh, JC Limited. It's a mid cap stock. There you qualify for 25% credit. Um, Liberty Holdings, 25%. And so it goes on. But bottom line, uh, you can borrow 872,000 Rand and you use that out of your share portfolio to do whatever you want to with it. Okay, when I say whatever, uh, we'll talk about it <laughs> just now. But um, you know, what are the benefits? You know, what are we proposing today? As I say, you want to, you, you, we propose that you apply for the script fund, those of you that need the cash. But it's not only needing your cash because of emergencies. I just think it's it's working smarter with your money, um, where you convert your existing share portfolio and using it as collateral and using other people's money to to pull to build your wealth. That's what we're talking about today. So, what are the benefits? What are, what, what what will this do for you? You don't have to sell any shares. Okay, so you're not going to trigger any capital gains. You're going to save money on on the transaction costs. There's no stipulated repayment period. So you can look at this as a short-term loan or um, you know, a bit longer. It's up to you. Uh, so remember, it's only 10.5%. And I'll and talk about it again just now what the costs are. There's no additional cost. There's no initial or uh, uh, setup fees and things like that. When it comes to the interest charged, it's, remember, it's at the normal prime interest rate. It's only charged when you start using the cash. When you take the money out of, your, out of the portfolio, it's charged monthly to your equity account. And going back to my... My little slide here. So we can take out 872,000. 
as a word of caution, this is how I would look at it. I won't take all that money out. I maybe might, you might decide on maybe take 50% out, leave 50% behind. I use a 70 30 uh, model. I take out 70%, leave the other 30% back for, for uh, margin calls. We'll talk about that now with, uh, as a buffer. Okay, now if you're taking out, um, what's that, uh, 872,000, 70% of that will be 610,000 roughly. Okay, and we're leaving roughly about 261,000 behind. Call it for variation margin or call it uh, a buffer. Now, on that, on that 610,000 range you're taking out, okay, you've been charged 10.5% per annum. Now, that works out to roughly about 64,000 rand for the year, divided by the 12, it's about 53,000 rand a month, per day, 178 rand. Now, that 178 rand is a percentage of your whole portfolio. We're talking about zero, it's a 0 0.005 per day. So, as long as your share portfolio is going up, the interest is being offset. That's what I mean by this this last slide here with the last point. Okay. So and again, just in case you want to have an extra cash in place just for that, that buffer for that variation margin. Okay. You gain access to the, the to facility straight away, and as I say, you can do whatever you want to this portfolio, um, whatever you want to the shares. You know, you can go on a fat Caribbean on the on a fat uh, Caribbean cruise. Now that's what we call bad debt. Uh, it's not uh, what I suggest you do, <laughs> okay? Uh, you wasted the money, you've enjoyed it, well, well done. Alternatively, you, you might want to pay off some bad debt, okay? For example, um, uh, credit card, whatever the case might be. Uh, but I suggest you, once you've paid that off, cut up the credit cards, close this account so you're not tempted to go back into the game. You know, I look at it this way. If you've been hounded by the creditors, pay off uh, 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 as much as you can to make it more bearable, um, you know, so that you can survive. But uh, you know, maybe it's a portion of that money to to, to, bad, to to that to that debt. The way I would look at it is get my money to work for me. So I'd either add it to existing share portfolio, okay. In other words, buying the dips and all those shares in that list just now are shares I looked at as I said, the hyper equal portfolio, portfolio that I was looking at were, were oversold, so they were bottom of the dips. I don't anticipate them to go much lower. So you. From a value investor, I would look for stocks that are undervalued, profitable, no financial risk. So you've got that margin of safety. And then also bring in um, uh, some technicals. They're the bottom of the cycle, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So you want to bend the odds in your favor by, by building that portfolio and then from there leveraging it off. So adding to existing portfolio is one way to do it. Start another portfolio and another top one, another portfolio and borrow money against that also. That's, those are two alternatives as a equity investor. So those of you who are a bit more advanced, um, you know, you might want to start a single stock futures account or a CFT account. Take 100,000 and you leverage that up on a, on a single stock future side now. Um, you know, you can either use that to hedge your, your share portfolio or you can make it uh, as also as a, tra as a trade of, a trading sp Trading portfolio, make your 100,000 rand in profits, take that 100,000 rand, put it back into your uh, equity account, um, and that's how it goes on. That's how you're making, using money, other people's money to, to build your wealth. You can start a, you can start a uh, index tra trading uh, uh, account, uh, trading the alls in the army. You can trade uh, currency futures. Um, you might want to go offshore using that those facilities. Okay, when you talk about using derivatives and using that loan facility. I was going to highlight for you very, very importantly that you need to watch it very, very closely. So risk management and, and money management will be very, very important for you guys. Okay. So, what are the considerations? Are you guys, um, you're asking what's the margin call? Now, this was that quote I was talking about just now. It's a quote from Tyler Perry. The thing about using other people's money is they're going to be setting rules. So yes, there are rules in place. Um, if the value of your holdings, your share portfolio decreases because number one, because of market activity, um, that's number one. And number two, because I'm on the top 40, you might be having the share in your portfolio from a market cap side, from a size, number 40 or 39, or on the top 100, number 99 and 100. And when the JSC reviews the sectors or the, the constituents of the, of the uh, top 40 and the mid caps, those shares drop out. You got to get a margin call. <laughs> okay, so just be aware of those those two scenarios. So it's important to be uh, to obviously um, 
watch the markets very closely, especially with volatility. Uh, but as I say, use that buffer in place. Um, and we also see over, over a period of time, you begin extra dividends coming in and things like that. But margin calls will take place from 12 o'clock on all trading days. Um, so you'll get your statement, you'll you get an email from us or a telephonic call. Um, gives you the opportunity to obviously to fulfill that margin call, uh, to top up. But as I say, that's if you've gone, uh, gone through your, th your, your 30 percent uh, cash. This is where you'll get your margin call. So if if you do not uh, meet that margin call, PHE has the right to sell the shares in your portfolio, excuse me, to make up the differences, and they'll start with the highest liquidity stocks. The whole idea, a member from both sides, is to manage the risk. Okay, so that's that's why we have this margin call on a daily basis. So how do you go about opening up subscription accounts? So you have to have existing share portfolio. As a, a screenshot of existing share portfolio. Also, a lot of them are, 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 are large cap stocks. Um, most of them are in the in the um, uh, top 100, apart from Transex. But uh, you'll see in your share portfolio, there's a little button there called PSG Script, uh, Script for Facility. You click on that, okay, you'll see that automatically tells you what shares will qualify. Loan facility, so you can see what what shares will qualify. You can see Aspen is a three percent. There's British American Tobacco, uh, uh, Richmond, Cura, etc. Now you see a large port of, a portion of of this portfolio, for example, twenty four percent and forty seven percent is in PSG Group shares. Now remember, I said to you it must be a well diversified portfolio, and also what's important is to look at a scenario where uh, the weighting of each share must not be more than 25%. So you can see uh, the holding in, 20, in, in consult still applies, okay, okay, still applies for the 25%, but it's not greater than 25, uh, greater than 25%. However, the holdings in PSG is 47%. Now this is how it would work. You see, on that 47%, on as a as a mid cap stock, um, that's why you'll qualify for that. As a, as your Percentage in your portfolio increases, uh, the 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 um, the loan value would decrease. So just be aware of that. So, so have a well diversified share portfolio of not one stock being more than 25 percent. That's uh, a, a word of um, advice. Okay. So um, that's the one question you guys might have. Um, Obviously, you must be careful of declining market conditions and that, and that call it futures close out when the JSC rebalances uh, the, the constituents. Okay. So, let me see what questions you guys have. Okay. Uh, maximize the screen here. Yeah, you clearly. Okay. Come, guys, where's the questions? For sure. Stuart. <laughs> Okay, that's obviously still my 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 uh, sound check. Hey, Milan. Hey, how are you, Milan? How does this compare to taking money from the bank? Okay, um, obviously that principal has to be paid back too. Um, yeah, obviously less risk, um, but they might be. Yeah, good question, Milan. In the sense that the bank's going to ask you for much more uh, collateral, so um, that kind of stuff. Um, and also, you know, from our side, it's much easier to open an account. 48 hours, you've got your account open. So that's, I think, uh, it'll be, uh, the, the way of looking at it. Uh, and the banks might be charging a bit more than Prime. Okay, remember, you can pay this back any time. Um, yeah, good question, man. Uh, okay, good question from Sean Edenrich. Is this a script and loan facility an industry-wide tool or only a PSG offering? Um, yeah, it was coming, it would come up in my, in my conclusion comments. But to answer your question, uh, it's unique. Um, I think there's only one or two other little brokers doing it out there. But, um, you know, it's, it, it is unique. Not many people have it out there. I better answer your question, Sean. I know that, uh, for example, Sunlama has it. That's only one other person I know that has uh, other brokerage firm that has it. Uh, Another question from Sean, what if only the indexed, uh, index traded funds in your portfolio, Satrix? Satrix uh, stocks do qualify, uh, Satrix 40, um, so they're also in the top 100, so they, they would qualify. Okay, 
uh, please she has no interest in what she's spending the loan on that. Uh, you can do it whatever you want to. You can go buy, as you say, you can buy a car if you want to, but it's not advisable. Uh, uh, something goes wrong, uh, you've got nothing to show for it apart from a car, and that car you might uh, have to sell to pay back the loan. I would suggest rather buy it into something else shorter term, um, like CFD, single stock, something goes wrong, I can get that money out very quickly and pay back the loan. Uh, but no, we do not have any interest in what you're doing. We suggest that obviously that you invest it, but uh, no, there's no there's no uh, criteria on that. Okay. Let me see what other questions you guys have. Okay, Jan, good question. How long is one's commitment to Scripfin? There's no payback period, so as long as you want to. It can be a short-term loan. Originally, this was designed as for, call it uh, bridging finance. You buy one property and, and, and you're in the process of selling another property. To pay for the transfer cost, you need some bridging finance. That's what it would, it would be useful. So uh, you can use it from a short-term to a long-term loan. Uh, as long as you can pay the interest on a daily basis, um, as long as your share portfolio is going up to compensate for that, no problem. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Johan. Thank you for the question. Are there any other questions? Look like that's all of it. Guys, thanks for the questions. Thanks for participating. Okay, let me wrap this up. Okay, so the main benefit I want you to gain from this is that um, you gain an immediate benefit to the facility. There's no uh, stipulated repayment period, John. Um, interest charged at normal interest rate, 10.5%. There's no uh, uh, additional costs. But also, remember, the main benefit here, I believe, is that you increase your portfolio without having to add any cash to your trading account, even in a single stock or CFT account. So the main thing I want to highlight here is, yes, I'm using leverage. Yes, I'm using good debt, okay, but with a caution, as I say, use wisely and use responsibly, okay. So, what's your next steps? If you haven't got it yet and you've got a share portfolio of us, go, go to your share portfolio, click on that button and see what you qualify for. What shares qualify in your portfolio, how much you qualify for, and then go apply for it. You know, it doesn't hurt. If you're not going to use the cash, you're not going to pay anything on it, but at least you've got that facility available to you. Okay, but guys, from our side, the webinar and the recording of the PDF will be sent out to you guys very soon. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week, whoops, sorry, next week we're talking about what to do in changing jobs, or you've been dismissed, or you uh, 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 call it uh, be re retired, what you want to do with your money. Okay, um, so those are the webinars until the end of October. Please go register, tell your friends about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, until next week, here's my contact details. Keep well, drive safely wherever you are, and uh, until next week, bye for now.